Looking to stake a claim on some security wisdom in a hurry? Well, you're in luck, Keyboard Cowboy. It's time for another Black Hills Information Security Nugget. Time for your first three Windows IR commands. Brought to you by Black Hills Information Security. Now here's John Strand. Hello and welcome. My name is John Strand. And in this video, we're going to talk about my favorite three opening Windows incident response command line command commands that you can run. Um, why are we going to talk about this? Because doesn't an EDR just solve all of our problems, just magically like complete security in ways of the heart? No, it actually doesn't. There's a number of situations where EDRs can be bypassed. One of those kind of points to prove that is, look, there's still pen testing and oh my God, look, there's actually still compromises happening. So what this means is EDRs are fantastic. In fact, they should be the cornerstone of your information security tooling at your organization. However, there are in fact times where these IR tools will fail. And that's not like they're garbage or anything because everything has failure points associated with them. Just we've got to be ready or we have to be ready to investigate. So what I want to talk about is the first three commands that I use whenever I'm looking at an incident or a system that I believe to be compromised or that aunt or that uncle is saying that their computer system is running slow, which at the end of the video, I'll give you tips on how to deal with that. All right, so let's jump right in. So I have my command prompt up here and I've already compromised my Windows computer system. Um, if you want more videos on that, we have tons of videos on bypassing AV. We have tons of videos about using Metasploit, Meterpreter and all those different things. Kind of irrelevant for this video because we're gonna be looking at IR. So I've got Meterpreter running on it because I'm truly just old and not creative. And we're gonna say, how do we actually go about detecting that malware on that computer system. Whenever you're looking for malware on a computer system, I strongly recommend that you start by looking at the network connections. The reason why I recommend starting with the network connections is you have to start somewhere. And if you look down in the YouTube comments, there's gonna be some troll that's like, but you know, there's actually some rootkits that are very difficult to find by looking at the network connections and they could totally hide those network connections or they could be using stateless protocols like ICMP or UDP. Don't listen to those people. I'm not saying they're wrong. Those are absolutely possibilities that you may encounter, but the overwhelming vast majority of malware that you will encounter, you're gonna be able to identify with a simple command of netstat NAOB. And the reason why I like NAOB is we're not gonna resolve any of the IP addresses, which I think is very nice. We're also gonna look at all of the different network connections, and we're going to be getting the process IDs and the process names. So now I've got all of the network connections. I have the process IDs and I have the process names. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time looking at all of these 0.0.0.0. These are the listening ports on your computer system. I'm going to be looking at the processes that have established connections or SIN sent. Now, if you have a lot of advertisements, if you have a lot of browser tabs open, this can be a lot of work but it's much better than trying to go through every single process on that computer system. And you can see I have this process right here, which is my Metasploit Meterpreter process, and it's called trustme.exe. I wanna dig into trustme.exe to find out more about what this process is. So the next command I can run is I can run a WMIC process where process ID equals 3060, get the command line invocation of that particular process. And it's just gonna tell me it was ran by trustme.exe. I know this because I literally just ran it from the command line. Some of the things that may be interesting to you is actually getting the full command line path, uh, dumping what are the command line options associated with it executing, because some malware, you might be able to tell what it is by some of the switches that are being used. But getting that command line is really helpful. The final one that I like is task space forward slash M, and we're going to look at the process. We're going to create a filter and we're going to look at the process ID of 3060. And there's something kind of important here. If you look at this particular process, we have like, what is it, four dynamic link libraries. These tend to be the same dynamic link libraries that we see for a lot of really basic application level backdoors. Granted, there's malware out there that does process injection, all kinds of really, really cool things. If you're dealing with hot nation state on nation state action, you lucky dog in your organization, you might see something a lot more exotic. 
But if you're looking at just standard malware that has command line access, has network access, you're more than likely going to see these four dynamic link libraries being utilized. So that's our quick nugget video for today. Thank you so much. My name is John Strand. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our training at Anti-Siphon Training um, and also BHIS. We do pen testy things. If you need a pen test, pick up the phone and call us. Call us anytime. Thank you so much. If you stuck around this long, like and subscribe to get more Black Hills InfoSec nuggets. And check out these other videos while you're at it. See you on the range, Keyboard Cowboy.